Middleton rips it and a kill for the Cavaliers. Meyer on the vicious attack, passed around. Big overhand, denied by Sasha Rudich and Maddie Williams. And a creative celebration dance by the uh, Lake Travis bench. Pulling everywhere here tonight for the Cavaliers. Rio on the serve, everybody scrambling. And Fake to the middle, here comes Clay Meyer around the bend. Here comes back Kenna Acklin with a kill on the right side of the net. They are fun to watch. Point for the Cavaliers, let's go! This is Lake Travis Lady Cavaliers Volleyball on KMAX Sports. The undisputed leader. Cavaliers! Cavaliers! Hey, good evening. You are listening to Lake Travis Cavalier Volleyball on KMAX Sports. We are broadcasting live here courtside at Bales Gym uh, in Buda, Texas, as your Lake Travis Cavaliers getting ready uh, for the second part of a trip here to Hayes County. Uh, Cavaliers taking uh, Lehman out earlier on. And uh, now, well, step two of taking out Hayes County, the, uh, the, <laughs> the Hayes Lady Rebels. Coming to this ball game, 16 and 15, two and two in district play. A lot of really talented kids on that side of the floor that have always given Lake Travis trouble, and we're looking forward to what should be a great matchup and a big three-game stretch for this Cavalier team. And we are pleased to be joined again from Project Serve. We've got Bobby Jones in the house court yes, side with sir. us. My man, how yes, you doing? Yes, sir. Man, I am blessed. I'm feeling good. Lake Travis uh, Cavalier volleyball squad is getting tuned up. The, the hitting lines look on point uh i'm loving the energy i see that this gym it's kind of small it's kind of tight 100%. but uh man Thank i tell you. you what this crowd loves volleyball and they are getting hype tonight all right this is a big three game stretch for the cavaliers you've got hayes westlake yep. and Bowie. arguably yep. probably the three toughest games on your schedule that you know they just want to see that model of consistency that has continued to kind of leak into to everything that this well, team does. Well, and like, like you mentioned earlier, uh, we're getting to the point, you know, you've been at it now for about six, seven weeks, team camp, two-a-days, uh, preseason, tournament season. Uh, these girls are starting to get banged up. They're going to start showing signs of wear and tear. And uh, those kids that get the most rotations, man, those are the kids that are going to be seeing it first. You know what I mean? And, and, I mean, this is a time when your sense of belief grows. You know, you've gone through all the all the preseason tournaments. You, you played the big matchups to just try to figure out what you're good at and what you got to key in on moving forward. And, right. You know, I, if you want to talk about what this team has really got better at, you know, ball control passing. Uh, Kelsey, I mean, we I feel like we have not mentioned how well Kelsey Cohen has played back there. It's been a lot of good liberos. I don't know if you've gotten to see many of them the past four years, but, you know, Cohen's making a case to be as good as any of them. All these back row players playing really well and the hitters terminating, as, as you like to say. And I now keep bringing the beach terms here, Bob. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, there's stuff that I feel like I can learn from you here each step of the way. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So Kelsey Cohen does lead that passing core. You've got Jordan Hymas back there, Ginger Baldwin, uh, Kristen Claymeyer passing all the way around. I mean, you've got strong passers. Some of these girls play beach in the summertime. Obviously, beach gets you a lot more touches, but in the indoor game, it the ball does move differently. Um, the float serve comes wild. The lights are a factor. Um, girls, it, it's, a, it's a larger court. Uh, it's a, it's a, a 30 by 30 box on your side that you got to defend. Uh, so yeah, there, there, there's a lot that goes into covering the court in terms of passing, but man, locking out those boards, locking out the platform and getting a, a nice apex to the ball, or if you're trying to run a tempo offense, if you're trying to run that stuff fast, you know, Kelsey, like you said, is as good as anybody in the game right now that I've seen uh, at the 6A level in terms of getting that pass to the setter and getting to the pass to the setter's hands so that we can run that tempo offense, whether it be a back set to the five, an out set to the four, or a tempo quick set down to the middle. And, I mean, that quick set in the middle has been killer. There are so many great middles on this team. Cassieri, <laughs> Sasha yeah. Rudich, got Claire Haven, Sydney Thompson. I mean, everybody, uh, I mean, everybody's doing their part. Like, I mean, that, that's one thing that's been exceptional about this team is, you know, everybody's got a hand in doing something for the team. And I, you get that sense of, like, 
this is a group not just 90% all the way in tune with everything, but 100%. I agree. And there's, there's a big difference. 90% looks great for a lot of programs, but when you're part of Lake Travis, like, it's 100% dedication. It's not 95, not 98, not 99. It's it's all in on what you're doing. And I agree. Uh, great group. And then the coaching core, you know, we talked to Brandis, uh, you know, two weeks ago about um, what type of belief system she's putting in place with these kids. And <clears throat> when you talk about uh, – the coaching staff wanting the buy-in. Every coach, every coach wants the buy-in. But it's up to this. It's up to the seniors and the juniors, the upperclassmen, the performers on the team yeah. to really establish buy-in. And that's what you have with outside hitter Kristen Claymeyer, um, senior middle Cassidy Erie. I mean, even uh, even like your sophomore outside hitter James Wheeler coming in, handling absolute business on the, uh, on the outside. Um, when you have players that are buying in that hard in preseason, it's not. It's not a question down the stretch, like you mentioned a second ago, with injuries, with long season, with getting tired, with yep. facing tough opponents. Are they bought in? Is this core group going to push them the duration? And I think the answer is yes. I mean, there, there, there's a lot of exceptional coaches out there. There's a lot of great programs where everybody's just trying to get the most out of each other. And... You know, and it just starts with your leaders. The organization comes from within, and everybody's got to lead. It's not just your best player. It's, you know, your 16th and your 17th and your 18th You're player. You're exactly right. You know, setting the tone every day. And anybody can be a leader, and when I coach, I, I emphasize that and said, you know, hey, anybody on this team can be a leader at any point in time, and, and you can make a difference just with your energy level as far as being the best you can be. And, you know, I th these are a good group of kids, I think, you know, these coaches understand all of that. And, you know, as a broadcaster, we're just here to try to inspire, motivate, reinforce, and encourage. And, uh, Amen. You know, hey, just have some fun out here because this is an exciting a game to broadcast. These two teams between Lake Travis and Hayes have given us some of the best games on our network for the past couple of years. Now, these two teams with the history already this season uh, playing in the Bronze Bowls. Uh, the Rebels winning... 2-1 to one during four line. Uh, all of them really close. Lake Travis taking the first set 26-24. Then wow. Hayes winning the next two. And, you know, I watched that game. I, I don't think there was anything, you know, Lake Travis did exceptionally wrong. You know, you that is the third day of that gold bracket of the tournament. Your legs are feeling it by that point. Exactly, so. exactly. Uh, tur tournaments are a crapshoot as it is, but you got to go best of three. Like, these, te these teams always go five. It it's been... A strange history they had, but they're really competitive. Well, I, you know, I'm watching. I'm watching these teams warm up, and uh, and you've got a, a nice middle core. You got a nice outside hitter core. They they sort of mimic each other. Uh, you got uh, similar personnel. You got nice nice hands on the setter, the, the two setters that I'm watching here uh, for Hayes. Uh, so when you can move the ball around the court like that, it definitely um, it definitely causes problems. And uh, like you said, man, it's gonna test the it's gonna test the resolve and the wherewithal of the Slate Travis squad to make sure that they come out firing on all cylinders, moving the ball around, and staying mentally tough. All right, we're going to take a break, give some love to our sponsors. We do want to thank our sponsors, Keller Williams Realty and Capital Title. Again, uh, thank you to Lake Travis, Lady Cavaliers. Uh, Go Cavs! Booster Club for the work they continue to do and what everyone continues to do uh, just to make this the best experience possible for this great group of kids who, uh, you know, by, by all accounts, deserve all the respect in the world. So... Uh, we will take a break. You're listening to Lake Travis Cavalier Volleyball. We'll be back with our starting lineups, introductions, and the first serve here on KMAX Sports and Vibe Media. Mike Youngblood, Bobby Jones, getting you ready Big for Mike. Lake Travis Big Cavalier Mike. Volleyball. Let's go. All right, brother. We'll be back after this. Vibe Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, B Y P E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. This broadcast and the support of Lake Travis Cavalier Volleyball on KMAX Sports and Fife Media is brought to you by our sponsors, Capital Title and Keller Williams Realty. We're thankful to have our sponsors and the support of this broadcast. We give a big thank you to Capital Title and Keller Williams. Well, let's take you back to the action. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast.
And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAC Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to chuck at kmacsports.com or merle at kmacsports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAC Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAX Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. And welcome back, Lake Travis Cavaliers and the Hayes Rebels getting ready to set it off. Here at Bales Gym in Utah, Texas, Mike Youngblood, Bobby Jones with you, and we just get ready. Yes, sir. We just get ready here as the uh, Cavaliers. 4-0 in district play, looking to make it 5-0. A big stretch of matches, and it's probably the, the right matchup for this team to get set and get locked and loaded and get ready to roll as, man, I love this team, the way they're competing right now, the way they're playing. And, you know, I just want to continue to see that all the way through. Yes. So uh, we're getting ready here. As uh, teams gathering up here for the final huddle. Mm -hmm. Quick, quick talk here, real quick, Mike. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Lake, Lake Travis School District just putting in two beach volleyball courts at the at the at the campus on campus. And on cam that's awesome. literally on campus and. Uh, you know, I just, as a beach player, as a beach coach, 15-year uh, vet in the game, yeah, uh, I just can't wait to see what it's going to do for the conditioning, the vertical, the change direction uh, for this for this Lake Travis squad. And not only that, but when you start talking about the concept uh, of getting your, uh, your young kids in, your middle schoolers in, yeah. what it's going to do for the depth of athletic prowess for this program moving forward. And we'll stand here for this. Kristen Claymeyer. Number six, Carson Hempel. Number 21, Kelsey Cohen. Number eight, Claire Havens. Number nine, Keely Hamilton. Number 10, Jordan Hymas. Number 11, Sasha Rudick. Number 12, Taylor Rue. Number 14, Arden Biesecker. Number 15, Jamison Wheeler. Number 18, Madison Williams. Number 19, Sydney Thompson. Number 20, Ginger Baldwin. Managers Kate Forsick and Matthew Villa Gomez. The Cavaliers are coached by head coach Brandis Boren, Taylor Moreno, Jennifer Dufour, and Savannah Derrick. 
And now for our Hayes Rebels. 6'3", sophomore, number one, Trista Strasser. 5'11", freshman, number two, jo Jocelyn Roberson. 5'7", senior, number three, Sierra Dittmar. 5'3", senior, number four, Ashley Esparza. 5'5", sophomore, number five, Brooke Sheely. 5'7", freshman, number six, Tori Samang. 5'10", sophomore, number seven, Madison uh, Hammond. 5'8", sophomore, number nine, Taya Oglesby. 5'11", senior, number 10, Jamie Agnew. 6'1", sophomore, number 11, Maddie Krafka. 5'6", senior, number 12, Kayla Tello. 5'10", junior, number 14, Ryan Torres. 5'4", sophomore, number 15, Emily Linder. 6'1", senior, number 17, Julia Bowen. 6'foot, sophomore, or junior, number 18, Sydney Collins. 5'11", senior, number 24, Katherine Croft. The Rebels are coached by head coach Stephanie Coates. Assistant coaches Allison Castillo, Dietrich Siegel, and Charles Morton. Enjoy the match. And a pretty nice match at the end. Enjoy this one, because this could be really good. Now, the, uh, yeah. How about that? There we go. We got, we got lineups and everything. <laughs> we got them in paper, and print. But we're broadcasting live here at KMAX Sports. Mike Youngblood, Bobby Jones getting you ready here for the Cavaliers versus the uh, Hayes Rebels. Cavaliers getting introduced as they've actually lost the last three. Well, to, uh, well, there you go. There you go. The, uh, yeah. There we go. We got a good photo in Taking there somewhere. A, hey, nothing like the uh, pregame selfie, a little tradition yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Mike and I have. Uh, commemorating you know, I, I'm our part of it first. To my picture, like I've just... I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I'm from the Midwest, so everybody's just very like stoic. Don't bring any attention to yourself. And I'm like, I come down to Texas here, and you got got to learn to have a little swagger about this place, man. <laughs> so you know, I had well, to break the chain, you, so to speak, as far as when, when don't you, try to show out. I said, you know, I'm gonna come here to Texas and crush it. Exactly. So and and when you work with kids full time, man, you you uh, uh, you know whether you want to or not, you're sort of caught up in the wave of. Of, uh, of the so you know, I think you and I are from a similar generation. The, the social media thing is is different, but it's had an impact. And, and uh, you know, we can talk yeah, for hours great. on it. Sometimes uh, it's great. It, it's it's uh, it's like anything else. It needs to be you know uh, measured and balanced. But uh, you know, the kids seem to love it. There's a lot of positives that come from it. Uh, there's all you know. There's obviously some negatives as well. But uh, yep. you know, helping keep people in the loop who are not here. That's what we're doing right now. Trying to keep everybody included. Inspire. Uh, and let everybody know how well Lake Travis Volleyball is doing. And we are almost to our first serve, Big Mike. All right. And we're going to have Abby Watts on the serve back row for the Cavaliers. will be James Wheeler, Kelsey Cohen and up front, Sasha Rudish, Kristen Claymeyer, and Maddie Williams. On the other side here for the uh, Hayes Rebels. Uh, let's see, who do we got here? we got Jocelyn Robertson, Ryan Torres, uh, Kayla Tello in the back row with mm -hmm. Catherine Croft. Yep. And the guy, I think Ashley Esparza. Ashley Esparza, looks and like the DS. And Jamie Agnew, a senior. Torres, uh, an all-tournament player at Freyline. Really, really outstanding player. She she was magnificent this gym last year. Uh, Croft's been a mainstay. And, uh, you know, a couple other faces here for the, uh, the Hayes Lady Rebel team. Well, you can bet that uh, we will not be serving to that libero, number 12, Tello. Uh, she's got uh, a good passing yeah. history. I saw her warming up. She looks like a strong player. Uh, we're going to try to play keep away and uh, try to get this uh, Hayes offense out of system to kick things off. And I, that's where like, the uh, Cavaliers have had a lot of successes. It's just if you start from that point, uh, if you take them first pass out of system and then – you just keep shaking the momentum to your side of the floor that you get them out of position and you hammer away. So, And here's the first serve. Receive yep. the middle of the floor. Set the Torres. Yep. Dump setting. That it's is a double. double. Good call by the up ref. If you're going to be sneaky and you're going to take that set over on the side, it's got to be a pretty clean motion. Mike uh, can't obviously double that ball. Yeah, that is... Uh, Unusual mistake, Torres with the backward set and a kill on the right side of the Hayes side for Jamie Agnew. We're tied up at one here in a set number one. Yeah, Agnew uh, approaches the ball with a lot of confidence. I saw her in warm-ups as well, swinging high, uh, contacting the ball high. She does a good job of getting her feet to the ball. 
she's going to be a she's going to be uh, an issue here tonight. Watts with a step behind. Clay Meyer sends it long. I try to go cross court. Yep. And you know that's your first hit, the first touch. But uh, got to come out aggressive here out of the gate. So two to one lead for the Rebels. Torres at her feet. Knuckler here in the middle of the floor. High set. Here's a big Woo! hit by Rudish. Hit the back row. Pass out of system. Torres hits it to the left side. I can cuts it across. Watts long set the other side. Claymire with a okay. big kill. Dig up. Or excuse me, by uh, Tello. Hit on here the other side, and that is going to be a point for the Cavaliers. Nice. Attack error on the left side by Jamie Agnew, but a great swing by Agnew. Hey, we're already seeing it. Uh, Kayla Tello uh, dug that hard cross-court hit from Clay Meyer, dimed it straight up. Uh, back row set from, uh, I, can't, I can't pops, remember. Pop serve here by Clay Meyer, hit nice. by Robertson left side, too strong. And we'll have a point here for the Cavaliers. Good, good. Let's maximize on these errors. Hey, man, uh, Abby Watts, let's talk about those hands real quick. She is smooth. She is absolutely confident and comfortable. Uh, each time the libero is getting, or each time the passer is getting her the ball in system, you can bet she is putting up butter. And uh, we'll have a point here for the Rebels, tied up 3-3. Three to three. Here between Lake Travis and Hayes. Mike Emma, Bobby Jones with you here courtside at Bales Gym. And coming into the ball game now will be Brooke Sheely. Hit it with the left hand, middle of the floor, sends it to Cohen. Pass here to the near side. Watts with the setup. Here comes Maddie with the runner. Okay. And a double. Cavalier so struck. Now you're starting to see what we call referee effect. Um, a really incredibly tight call on the play just now before, uh, and it can get your setter. Clay Ma there we got Maddie Williams sending it on over here right side. Torres with the set here comes a tip on over. Saved nice. by Abby Watts. And nice. two-handed dump Tomahawk. on over by Maddie Williams. Here we go. Hit on the right side. The liner down the line by Maddie Kropka is a point here for the Rebels. And it's 5-3. to three. Cavaliers down two and just trying to find the rhythm, Bob. I yeah. mean, it's tough. Two double sets back to back. Uh, like I said, a little bit of a little bit of referee impact there. Hopefully, Abby Watts can shake it off. Nice outside set on the right side. And Maddie Williams with the strike on the right side, a bit too high, and it's going to be a point here for the Rebels, six to three. And not just shaking it off. I mean, they've had to play some pretty easy teams that. I think once you get back into it, playing a tougher team. Here it goes, quick set to net Watts. Here's a uh, Cavaliers kind of struggling a bit early on. It's another error, seven to three. And you know, that, that, like I said, that's a tough adjustment coming from teams that you're heavily favored by. Right. And then well, you're trying to get yourself amped up for a very big game. And I feel, I just feel like they're. Hey, you they're, know, they're just trying to find it. You come from the basketball world, and you see it all the time. You, you get these uh, young guys and gals hyped up. The, the music's playing. The crowd's running. Everybody's jumping a little higher. Everybody's, you know, that adrenaline can uh, can uh, can make your arm swing uh, a little, you know, a little less tight than than it typically is. So these guys, they're going to shake it off. They're going to they're going to settle into their own skin, and and we'll see the calves, uh, the, the the lady calves that we know and love here in another point or two. Just yeah, hey. Settle it down, believe in, and just make the first touch. And the, you know, however long it's going to take you to get back into the rhythm here, you know, whatever it takes. Seven to three, Hayes leads here in set number one. Here on the road tonight at Bales Gym, Cavaliers four and zero, uh, and trying to see if they can make that five and zero. Oh, here comes the serve by Shield, a good pass by Cohen, set by Watts at the outside. Here comes James, block back, and the dig up there by Cohen. Cohen in position to get it on the block back, but just couldn't keep it up in the air. Yeah, definitely there for the cover. Uh, nice big block on that right side. We're going to start seeing Abby Watts work that ball around the court to, to, to get multiple hitters involved. Shealy on the serve, sends it to Chams down the fourth side. Watts for the set. They'll go right back to Chams and off the block. Okay. High up in the air, second touch. Now it comes free a ball. Uh, free ball. Saved by Claymeyer. set yes. by Watts. Here comes Chams. Yes. Yeah, a kill for Chams Wheeler. There we go. Yep. Kristen Claymeyer sliding in on a knee just now, using those pads, getting a perfect dime pass to Abby Watts. And, Ben, I'll tell you what, when she's in system, she's as good of a hand setter as I've seen in the indoor game. 
Uh, she, she's outstanding. And we'll talk about Chris a little bit later on here. Cohen now on the serve left side. Floats it deep. Sends it to the deep court. Set here to the far side. And Torres Out off bounce set. And here's, here comes Watts. To earn a here break comes point. Maddie. Maddie with the throw over. Okay. Sends it diagonal. Set by Tello. Here comes Torres from the back row. Too strong. Point Just for the Cavaliers. Good lay off there by Chris Claymeyer. Absolutely. Now we're starting to catch our rhythm again, all right? That's a nice surge by the Hayes Re Lady Rebels to uh, to push us back on our heels for three or four, three out of the last five. But we're going to transition that and 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 change this change the direction of this momentum. Here we go, Cohen on the serve, sends it here middle of the floor. Torres with the set behind Kropka, Matty Kropka cuts it. Yeah, she had an older sister that was about as outstanding as anybody. I assume that was a sister because look awfully alike, but. <laughs> Well, number 11, Kravko, just with the uh, the left-handed kill cross court there. But you're seeing uh, you're seeing our serve going after number five, Sheely, uh, pushing her back on their heels, serving her deep. Erie, Erie with the Eerie. kill in the middle, <laughs> kaboom! <laughs> That's high five worthy, Big Mike. Cassidy, Erie coming down the middle on a one tempo set and absolutely lighting up the ball. We are back. I mean, you hear that silence in the gym, and all of a sudden you just stop your breath as here he rises and go, oh, no, something. There, somebody's about to get killed back there. <laughs> here comes Agnew, cuts it diagonally, a very good hit on the left wow. side of the net. And actually, check that. That's Catherine Croft, number 24. Absolutely, man. That was a smooth attack by Catherine Croft. Cross court, really high contact. Uh, able to squeeze it between your uh, your uh, your two and three positions on the back row. And senior Ashley Esparza serves it to senior Clay Meyer. Hemp with the side. Here comes Jams, a contested joust. That's on nice. the A side. Okay. Set from the middle of the floor. Croft gets her feet set, Full launches shot. it over. Hempel from the attack line. Jams from the left side. Nice. High pass up in the air. Avoids the basketball hoop. And a third touch by Torres. Touched right, here Keely by Hamilton, Hamilton set by Hempel. Low set, Erie throws it on over sidearm. Hit back here to the other nice side. Cohen with a one-arm save. Cohen. And now here comes Chams. Chams sends it deep court. Cross High court, pass. we have a back set for Here Croft. comes Croft. Croft Tip. throws it over. Hempel sets. Cohen bumps it here to the left nice. side. Here comes Chams. Yeah. Wheeler with the kill. With the kill. For Chams, Wheeler, pump up the Chams. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I just <laughs> so, Mike, i got to correct I, you. I, I got to correct you. The, the the open hand push is actually called a tip, right? Wait, so, wait, wait. Say that so again one more time. The open hand push over the net is actually called a tip. A tip, throw. Yeah. The throw is yeah, yeah, actually throw, the, you know. it's the foul version of that. So and we got an ace here for absolutely. Was yes. that Taylor Rio. And the gym is getting loud on the Lady Cavs side of the bench. We are electric. Cavaliers down at 8 yep. to 10, and Rio now here trying to make a run for the Cavaliers. Uh -huh. Set to Tello. Left a tip, tip on covered over by on the dump. Here Cameron. comes Hamilton here the right side. Oh! Back in the net. Oh! Hand touch over by Erie. Hayes trying to get this one back over. It's going to be a free ball strong. situation out of bounds. <laughs> wow. Hamilton throwing her hands up in the air as that ball wasn't anywhere near her. She knew that one was going I said, I said Cameron a second ago. That was number six, Carson, with the immediate cover on that. Uh, on that short block received the by play alive. Tello Torres goes to Croft, Croft, and it's gonna be overpassed. Bump nice up in set. the air, hit by Collins. Here comes Croft, oh! denied! Pass to the Erie, and <laughs> Keely Hamilton to the right side of the net. Get the energy rolling, let's go! Yes! That, is, that big block is gonna put us at 10-10. Hayes taking an immediate timeout, and I think that's a good call. You can definitely feel the Lake Travis energy surging right now, and you've got that big Korg blocker group up front right now causing problems for the Hayes outside hitting core. And they're getting nasty out there. I mean, these kids, they know each other. They're friends with each other. But you can just see that look in Cassidy's eyes that she came here to win today. She came <laughs> here to lead this team. So great energy out there for the Cavaliers. Wow. So we're here tied up at 10 here in set one. Cavaliers fell down early and now swinging it back. Uh, Lake Travis is way on the floor here for the Cavaliers. Will be I want to I talk about number six, Carson. Uh, she just took a big bang from cross court hit from number 11, Krafka. She dug that ball nails. And when we say nails, we mean perfect apex yep. drops right on top of the setter's head. And it was Effortless. She didn't even right. change expression on her face. I got to shout her out for uh, dig of the match so far uh, with that heavy left-handed hitter hitting cross court right in her breadbasket. 
Rio now going to be on the serve dribble, so a little baby jump serve. Line drives at four side. And an ace for Taylor Rio. Ace for Rio. Esparza with the shaky legs locked out the knees on that pass and shot that ball a little too tight to the net, my friend. And Rio's going to continue the rally here. Slow hey, serve. Oh. Ooh, and hit around out of system. Here's the free ball situation. Blake Travis Hamilton on the attack. The right Temple side. Here with the, the tip once, twice, and goes out of reach. But it, you know, here's the thing. It looks like a throw because it catches the fingers. 100%. And, 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 like, it looks like a throw. 100%. And I have to differentiate it from being a tip or a tip where, it, you know, a little, but again, little touch. But by definition, the referee is going to call that if it is a throw. Yeah, and that it, is, it, when, that is when it rolls double, off the right? back of the hand. Exactly. Rio here on the surf sensor. Deep floor, deep metal. Torres hits outside. Cross. Woo! Laser dug up by Cohen. And play back here to Kristen Claymeyer. Sends it deep middle of the floor. Torres passes it here to the left near side. Croft cuts a good save by Claymeyer. They'll go back to Claymeyer. Block. Go, 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 go. Heppel hustling nice for it. Block. And out of reach. And a good block on the right side. Kelsey Cohen going horizontal just now with a perfect platform dig down that right side line. It's literally one of the most impressive, dig, impressive digs I've seen of the year. 12 to 11, Cavaliers lead by one. Received by Claymire for a side of the floor. Hempel hustling, here comes the tip on over. Oh, 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 oh. drops into the hands of Catherine Croft in the deep middle. 13 to 11, Cavaliers rolling now here in set one. And that's why that's why uh, Kristen Claymire, as an undersized outside hitter, is one of the best in the game. She changes up that tip and drops it right in front of the back row Eerie for an easy point. On the serve, they're going to be tapped over by Agnew. Rio trying to save it, almost got to it. A good effort to lay out for that one. So Mike Rio just incorporated what we call a pancake. Okay, got that she hand, put hand that underneath hand it. flat on the floor, and it, it actually came up. Just had a little too much backspin to play. Yeah. Out of that pancake lake in that middle portion of the floor. Ooh, and a good ace by Croft. Claymeyer playing right back. Thought that one might scream out and just snuck on in a good serve uh, there by Sydney Collins, excuse me. Junior, six footer here for this Hayes Lady Rebel squad. And here we go. Collins on the serve, tied up at 13 at step one. Hemp with the seven on the floor. Sasha! Hey the Sasha, the Slayer! Sasha, the, the for Slayer! The Cavaliers. 14 nice. to 13. Nice set. <laughs> nice set by Carson, number six. She was sprinting full speed for about three steps. She got her momentum stopped and delivered a dime on a one set to Sasha the Slayer, as you call her. Abby Watts here on the serve, hit on the left side, blocked! Blocked by Maddie Williams and Sasha Rudich. These kids believe, man. 15 to 13. Uh, actually, I've got that wrong on the scoreboard. Let me change this here. And here's the serve received here near side on the Hayes direction. Here's Robinson hitting for the attack line. Blocked by Rudish, but tipped back to the little T side. Watts with a set. Rudish with a kill. We're jousting back and forth. Hayes looking lost. And now here's a freebie. Here's the scoring chance. Watts, Rudish gets it through. Good. Pushing it through. Abby Watts with a one and a half tempo set. Pushed slightly to the outside in the three position. Sasha literally getting elbow high and crushing ball. 10-foot line. That was fantastic volleyball in the middle. Setter Watts sends it down the line, right side. Low pass around to the other side of the floor. Hit by Agnew. Cohen from the middle of the floor. Passes behind. Claymire with a big rip Claymire and a kill. Claymire with the rip. Off the back set from Kelsey Cohen. Big Mike, we are watching the Lady Cavs clicking on all cylinders right now. And Hayes, like you said a second ago, does look a little bit lost. But we believe Cavaliers. And an ace for Abby Watts. We believe 18 to 13, Cavaliers lead by five and playing tough and determined early on. On the floor is Watts, Rio, Cohen, and Watts sends it down the line here right side towards the high center. Can see attack by Agnew, tries to get the drop, covered by Claymire. They'll go back to Claymire. Claymire middle of the floor and oh. get the kill. Mike, Kristen Claymire is feeling it. I can tell in the speed with which she is yeah, transitioning let's go. back. She is getting her, she's reloading for her approach and stepping to the ball with a fierceness. It is awesome to watch. And I mean, teams win with energy. I mean, you, you win with your effort, you, you win with your technique, skill, talent, all that thing. But the thing when you play against somebody, when you have more energy, when you have more of that gusto in you, 
that fire, it's like, man, that takes it right out of the other team because they look at that and go, how are we supposed to match that? Absolutely, absolutely. You can't manufacture that. That is, a, that's an inertia. That's a, that's an internal thing that has to come, like you said a, a little while back, from the team believing and being together all at, all at the same time. And uh, Hayes, Hayes is a little uh, despondent right now. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna see if they push back. Yeah, um, and they're, they're good enough to do it, man. They're they're an excellent team with a great head coach. So I mean, Cavaliers in good position right now. But you got to continue. 19 to 13, Cavaliers lead here in set one and a six point lead. Watts continues with a serve. Ooh, a block back to Maddie Williams off the one touch and another point for the Cavaliers. A bizarre sequence there as kind of some jungle ball out here for the, the Rebels off of that the great touch by Watts. And Watts on the line drive, near nice. side, passed yep. around by Esporza. Torres sets it up, oh my lord. That was a big hit by Croft, but negated by the whistle. Negated by the double set. 21-13, Cavaliers rocking, rolling. I got, I got nothing else for that. I, I thought I had something funny there, and we've got a service <laughs> error. Good run there by Abby Watts, 14-21, Cavaliers lead by seven. Your, your humility is top notch, my friend. You know, I, it's, it's part about growing in the Midwest. Torres I'll try not to talk about too much. But here's Kelsey Cohen on the pass. Here comes Watts on the set. Claymire with a big swing. Good dig up by Torres on the first touch. Go to Matty Croft. Go to the left. He gets a block back. Hits hey it straight oh. up in the air. And you cannot get past Sasha Rudich. Good luck with that. You cannot get past Chris Claymire. Matty Williams, Cassidy Erie. Claire Havens, Champs Wheeler, like all of these gals can really get up and get in front of the ball. 22 14, Clay Meyer here on the jump Crawford serve. An out of system pass. Torres with a free ball situation. Clay Meyer literally all over the court right now. And a hit on over by Rudich. Recovered. Croft tries to cut it off the block. Cavaliers getting into system. Here comes Champs off the block. Nice Two handed up. punch up by Tello into the net. Here comes the third hit over by wow. Croft. Spinner here to the net. Big oh, okay. by Rudich. Block back. That's going to be a net violation called on like Travis. Travis. Interesting. Probably a good call. Takes a lot of talent for these referees to see uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in transition and a play that's running back and forth that fast to be able to call these calls cleanly and fairly. And 22 to 15. Cavaliers lead and a service error on a Brooke Shealy. And here we go, 23-15 Cavaliers playing with a lot of energy thus far. And Cohen here on the serve, lines it middle of the floor. And we've got a, was it an overlap call? That is an out of rotation call on the Cavaliers. Uh, out of rotation. Okay, that Not is. Not 100% sure. We, we don't see that too often. No, I, I mean, I can't, I can't even. Even in the past years, like you maybe see it once every two or three matches. But 16 to 23, here comes a line drive served by Tello and out of play, service error. Boy, these uh, these Rebels, well, you, I'll tell you, you see the fight in them, but they look a little shocked right now. Absolutely, and, and that's one of the telltale signs of a, of a team that's lost a little bit of focus. When you miss two of your last three serves uh, 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 down to a, to a strong team, and over pass, Erie with the hammer. Cassidy. And that is the set point. Cassidy Erie with an absolute atom bomb detonation down the middle, lands on the eight foot line and bounces to finish the first set. Mike, that might be some of the best volleyball I've seen Lake Travis play. The 10 to the last 15 points were some of the most electric points I've seen them play this year so far. Well. You know, Brad Stevens always has something that he says that it's only good if we do it again tomorrow. So, you know, that's Amen. that's awesome. But it's, you know, can you go do it again? And that, that, that's a tough about thing about emotional peaks that, you know, my experience with coaching is that, you know, with programs and everything, you go through your ups and downs. And, you know, when the highs are great, they're amazing. And when the lows are, you know, whatever they are, they're, they're pretty devastating. And. You know, the, the, the bigger part is just feeding that energy so that you keep staying at that high level. And, you know, when you come down from that to stay even keeled and, 
you know, your right. next step is right to, to high energy. And I, I think this group understands it. They're, man, they are really competitive. Like, you know, these were, you know, my experience was with this program, all really exceptionally nice kids with bright futures, great intelligence, hardworking, but, you know, the soul of it, the, the spirit, and that just we're coming to get you. I mean, that, 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 I love that about this team. They're, they're, are, they're feasting right now. And a 25-16 lead. Uh, after like so about 25 to 16 decision here after set one, the Cavaliers just uh, <laughs> doing some good things here. But we'll we'll take a break. Well, and, and and you talked about energy a second ago, Mike. When you when you look at the Cavaliers across the board, I've watched them practice. I've seen them during two days. I've seen them during tryouts. I've, I've watched them on, uh, during assessments, and I've seen half these guys on the sand. When the energy gets to this point, most of these kids know how to sustain it. It's a mental yep. game. And, and the idea, like you said a second ago, it's putting one foot in front of the other, not getting too uh, high emotionally, but creating an emotional wave that it's not about being humble or braggadocious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's more just it's, it's the energy feeding itself and becoming, like I said a second ago, an inertia that is – Heart, it's it's literally it's it's a force and it's a force of six it's a force of 16 uh plus the coaching staff and and hayes has their work cut out for him to finish this match my friend yeah we want to thank our sponsors capital title and keller williams realty bringing you uh like travis cavalier volleyball on kmac sports and vife media mike young like bobby jones uh, about to go to set number two as uh as Cavaliers in a pretty good position right now. Again, this uh, first of a three-game set against some really great teams that, hey, passed test number one. Now here comes test number two. And, you know, do you stay out and just keep bringing the heat? And, uh, you know, this is going to be a good question mark. It's hey, listen, if I'm Hayes, I go back to basics. The one, two, three is a volleyball. Number one, serve inbounds. Number two, pass with an apex on the ball. Not shooting the ball to the net, not moving our not moving our feet, but keeping our butt down and making sure that that ball has a settable apex. And number three, take smart shots. When you get when the crowd gets involved and the energy gets high, it's very easy to take your eye off the ball and try to smack the smack the leather off of it or uh, take unnecessary risks to try to gain all the points back in one play. It's important for Hayes right now to just stay level-headed and try to get back in the game one point at a time. And yeah. I'll yeah, you know, tap me on the shoulder when we get between sets two and three because I want to talk some beach with you and Absolutely. just that overall impact on the game. Well, we've got an extended time that, that, that we can kind of just have a, have a conversation Absolutely. here. So Watts with a set hit to the right side. Here comes Clay Meyer with a glide to the net, the hit on over. Torres scrambling to get this pass. Kropka cuts it across, and we've got an air cold on Lake Travis here in set. Uh, the beginning of set two. And one point to none lead for the Rebels. And that violation there on Lake Travis, <coughs> we got to mitigate and minimize our own errors. Brandis Bourne talking about that a couple weeks ago. Ooh, Watts with a one-handed save. Clay Meyer with the freebie back the other way. Torres sets. Here comes Kropka down the line. Ooh, good pass up. Dig overhand dig once, twice, and Clay Meyer with a good effort. And Cohen kind of in the murderer's row behind the blockers down the line against the hitter, and that's probably the toughest position to try to dig especially on the floor the, by far. Exactly, especially with a, the, a strong lefty playing right side, going crossbody down the line. And Clay Meyer in the net, sir, uh, hitting error. Okay. And it'll be a 3 to nothing lead for Hayes. And a set number two as we update our K-Max scoreboard. Torres back to serve. Line drive, Claymire passes it. Watts with a gorgeous set to the outside. Claymire a little too much mustard on that one, foot out. Kelsey Cohen just now with back-to-back -back digs, one overhead hand dig uh, that we will talk about. This Mike that we will talk about on the beach side of things. Damn. We got Sasha Rudich with a kill from the middle. Yeah, Mike, talking about that. Yeah, we're just, no, we're trying to make sure your mic's as close as it can be so Appreciate that, that, that. we're hearing all this insight <laughs> as well as we can. Too kind, my friend, too kind. Hey, man, I'm a giving person. I, I'm a competitor, and I just want everybody to, to be as good as they can be. Set here by Torres, hit by Robertson. Left side on laser. Clay Meyer trying to lay off of that one, and guess, <laughs> guessed wrong on that. Well, Thanks. actually, no, she was guessed correct. She sure did. Clay Meyer telling me, no, you're wrong, Mike. 
<laughs> Kristen Claymeyer doing her best Matrix impression just now. Uh, literally bending over backwards to get out of the way of that ball. Torres with a set. Here comes Croft off the block in the hands of Jams and Sasha. 5-2. to two. Cavaliers down at three here in set two. They took set one, 25-16. Number 10, Croft with a nice pike on that ball. Uh, able to squeeze it off the outside hand of Jams Wheeler. Received here by Claymeyer, set by Watts. Here comes Jams off the antenna here on the left side. Just a little out of control. We need to get our kind of get our get ourselves back in collection. Uh, the passes are where they need to be. We need to slow our offense down and and uh, and not try to make everything happen all at once. Received by Cohen, set by Watts from the middle. Here comes Jams, the collide strike, and off the block, and a point for the Cavaliers. Big tool touch out of bounds. He had a single block on the backside. James Willie taking full advantage with a cross body swing down the line. Do we have the score correct? Six to three. I feel like it was five, five two. I, I well, okay. Well, we'll see here. Six to three. It's going to be Cohen on the serve. Knuckles it deep court. Set here from the attack line inside the attack line. Kropka cuts it and hits it at Watts, and that'll be a kill for Matty Kropka. Now leading uh, seven to three. Hayes responding here in set two, and you know you ride the wave here if you're Lake Travis. Find the momentum when it comes to you, and let's go. Seven to three. Here comes the serve received by Champs. Good pass. Good little jump set here to Erie. Slaps it over, hitting the left side by Croft and blocked by Erie. <laughs> Cassidy Erie. Let, letting them know where that ball touched down. Blocking it straight down on the two foot line. Four to seven and teams just can feed off of energy like that. I mean, you just, you got a teammate like that that's ready to go out and compete as Hempel sends the serve. Deep corner, far side, a pass across here to the right side. Nice roll Croft. shot from Krofka across court. Here comes the Claymire on the back row attack and slips through the arms of <laughs> Catherine Croft. <laughs> Kristen Claymeyer with a back row attack, taking off about the 12-foot line with a deep roll shot to the deep middle. Roll shot, I like that one. Received here by Croft. They'll pass across. Croft from the right side. Cohen trying to lay out for it, but good effort. Eight to five. Let me tell you something, Mike. They're going to have to work on getting their transition footwork down to this left side to get a, a, a block set up on Krofka. She is lefty, which is, uh, is already a world of different, uh, it's a myriad of different problems Ooh. for blockers. Apple with the set, here comes Hamilton with the eraser here, left side, hits on over diagonally, Torres to the right side, Krofka the big wind up, Claymire with the save, and will be spun and kicked here to the uh, Cavalier bench. Now, that was the thing I learned, I didn't know you could use your feet in this game, and, yeah, and Claymire's got a foot dig this year. Absolutely. I don't think you see it too often, but. You definitely don't, but uh, <laughs> when it probably for good reason. <laughs> well, yeah, when the uh, when the athlete has a lot of kinesthetic awareness in their body and they can use different. Mike, they are they are absolutely liberal with these hands calls. I mean, they are doling them out. That's I believe the seventh hands call of the match, uh, which I, in my opinion is is pretty tight. These and guys, you know, uh, there's definitely an impact when the referees are calling them that tight. And a 10 to five, a five point lead for Hayes and set two. And, and like when these two teams have been good uh, at this kind of relative same talent level, I mean, these, this is kind of what these matches have been like. The team who gets up first tends to t tends to really love the energy. And then once you get into that second set, there's just that feeling out process of, you know, how do you put a good team away? And, you well, know, it's a good the, battle. The game, you know, you you know you know this as well as I do from the from the from the game of basketball. It's about adjusting. It's about making adjustments at every position. Uh, if you have a setter who's really going to an outside and they're clicking well, how do you adjust to that outside set uh, with your blockers? If you're if you're detonating down the middle well, how do you squeeze? How do you get coverage uh, from your back court to get better digs? Uh, it's a constantly evolving process. Yeah, it is. It is always fluid. So out of the timeout, received by Claymire, passed by Hempel here to the right side. Chams with the attack on the right side and finds the seam between the right back and the uh, the mid. So what we got? Carson is from just the, the two weeks ago when I was last here with you, Mike. Carson Hempel's hand setting has improved 15, 20 percent 
She looks comfortable, she looks confident, and she's setting up some absolute butter for these ladies to hit. Croft with a laser pass across the floor. Good save by Hempel Cohen with a pass. The drop off here by Claymeyer. Pass across the floor. Croft off the top of the tape. Received by Rio. Set by Hempel. Hit by Erie. That did not clear the top of the tape. And a point for the uh, Hayes Rebels, 11-6. Hep I mean, we've talked about it on our broadcast. She's, she's a kid that just keeps getting better. I mean, just learns little, little things that help the teams win. Credit to her, she's done a fantastic job. Her and Watts have both been awesome. Set by Hempel, Claymeyer hits it. Left side, off the hands, and a drop down My as it clears the net. And goodness. Claymeyer bringing it here for the, for the, the uh, I wanted to say the Cleveland Cavaliers, but the <laughs> like Travis Cavaliers. Well, LeBron Claymeyer, yeah, I want to talk about that too. 11 to seven. Absolutely. Received pass around the floor, hit on the left side by Agnew with a drop. It's received by Hempel, set by Erie with the pass. Here comes Claymeyer with a strike. Claymeyer with the, the parry. Let me tell you something. Cassidy Erie dropping a knee and bump setting that ball with that apex. Clean, gorgeous, up and down set for Claymeyer to come and bang. That looked like a beach set, and that was all Claymeyer needed to, to waylay on that ball just now. And here's the serve received by Hayes. Torres is just going to launch the second touch. Here comes Rio with a pass. The tap across over by Claymeyer. Hit from the middle by Agnew. And we've got a net violation called on Lake Travis. Now 12 to 8. Hayes leading by 4. But you see signs of life. The Cavaliers trying to break through. And Absolutely. Mike, we're down uh, 5 a little bit ago. We're down 4 now. We're going to try to keep chopping at that lead. Here comes Claymeyer around the bend and cuts it across the floor. Pass stays on that same side. Hit by yes. Agnew into the net. And you now Claymeyer's first touch made it so that they could not get into system. Let me tell you something. It is impressive how well she gets off the floor, how high she reaches, and how she's able to deliver a ball that's, that's spinny and fast and sharp to that cross corner. 12 to 9, a knuckler, middle of the floor, set by Torres, bump back and hit back to Croft. Denied! Block City by Sasha Rudich. <laughs> Nobody invited us to the block party, but Sasha no. is definitely hosting that bad boy. That is a solo block that party. That is a solo block in the middle. <laughs> uh, Mike, that can be demoralizing for your best, the best hitter on your squad. Let's see how oh, they yeah. bounce back. That's an ace serve. Is that the what? Line by Watts, cool, calm, and collected, Abby Watts. I, I feel like we haven't talked enough about how good Abby's been, and I mean, that's just a testament to how good both of these setters are. Because the hitters are doing so well, I just forget, boy, he's got some really great pass, some great play, blocked to the net by the Rudich and Williams wall on the right side. We're tied up at 12, Cavaliers bring the heat! 12 to 12, and a timeout, and uh, yeah, back to Claymeyer, uh, has committed to Houston Baptist to play beach. Uh, got to broadcast all those basketball games last uh, last winter, and I had low expectations for Chris because her dad told me, well, she doesn't really touch a ball, and her instincts in basketball were off the charts. A ferocious competitor, great defensive player, good shooter, creative, great feel for the game, and, like, you see how that leaks into volleyball is that, you know, she's got all of those things, and, you know, we try to bang the drum of, like, you know, hard worker, great intangibles, great athlete, too. And I, and you were alluding to that earlier. Absolutely. When you watch Claymeyer play, she does, you can, you can kind of see her weaving together all the talents that she kind of has in, in terms of those different sports. Uh, as you mentioned, just committed. We were so proud of her, the Project Serve family, for committing to Houston Baptist for beach volleyball, Division I. Uh, program out there. A uh, lot, lot of great things happening in Texas Beach Volleyball. We'll touch base on that between the second and third sets. Here we go. Watts on the serve. Middle of the floor. Set by Torres. Hit by Agnew. Cohen trying to save it. Claymeyer trying to lay herself out for it. That's great effort. That's great effort. You may not get it every time, but if you keep trying... Man, yeah. the greatest things come from that. What we call there is a good miss. Uh, when you have teams or when you have girls that are flying all, all over the court, it's inspiring. And that inspiration can lead to the other team still making errors, directly and indirectly. Lake Travis leading one set to none, and we're tied up at 13 in set number two. 
And there comes Claymeyer on the serve. A, a jump spin serve received Torres. Now sends it across the floor. Hit hard. Saved by Jams. Watch straight up in the air. Here comes the tip on over by Matty Williams. Set by Torres. Krofka hits right side. Deep court. Here comes Claymeyer with the pass. Watch with the set. Jams with a hit. Off the block. Saved by Torres. Tello puts it up in the air. They're jousting for it. Krofka won't be able to reach for it. Try to lay it up with the right hand close to the net, but even if she did, Jams would have been waiting their left side to say not tonight, miss. Let's talk about how well Maddie is playing on the right side over here. She is blocking for days, siding out well when she gets the opportunity, but is just an absolute force on the net. Watts hits it here to Jams, dug up here by Croft. They get it over the net. Rudish with the pass up, Watts scrambling to get it. Here comes Clay Meyer with the back row attack, sends it deep court. Set by Torres, hit to the outside by Agnew. Tapped Clay over. For the dig. Watts with a dump! Watts with the well timed dump! As clean as it gets, Mike. I'm trying to tell you some of the best the hands I have ever seen. I would die to get that kid on the beach with those hand sets, man. She is dynamic, she is smart, and she's got core vision. 15 to 13, Cavaliers and a line drive. Going to be a service error on Clay Meyer. Well, I mean, when you have that kind of serve like that, you'll get that variance of it where you get some great ones and, you know, you're going to get a little too much mustard on the hot dog sometimes. <laughs> So that Clay Meyer almost hitting that one out of Hayes County, but uh, 15 to 14, we're teasing. But a second touch by Watts, trying to keep it straight up in the air for Rudish to hit, will go into the net. We're tied at 15. All right, score is tied at 15. Gabby Hayes on the serve. It will be Sheely on the serve received by Clay Meyer, set by Watts. Here comes Jams, left side. Jams down. What and a, a smash by Jams Wheeler. What a peak top reach for Jams just now getting high. And I'm talking second, right, you know, second or third red on the antenna and hitting downward trajectory. That's impressive. Yeah, you can't. You can't block. You know, when you've got a high ball hitter on your team, boy, that, that's such a great weapon to have. Torres with a set from behind. Akrofka at her feet. Out of system Two set. Two-hand punch by Clay Meyer. Set by Watts. Maddie on the attack. Maddie and a kill the for line. the Cavaliers. <laughs> wow. When you have a right side and a left side option like that, Mike, Abby Watts literally just feasting and helping these guys get the assist. Maddie down the line with a banger. Impossible to dig on that one. Cohen with the serve sent by Torres here in front of the net. Here comes Croft, way too strong, but a great swing and just past the boundary line and a point for the Cavaliers. You're seeing critical mass right here, Mike. You're seeing Hayes trying everything they can to stay in this game, and you're watching Lake Travis like a truck rolling down the hill. You just can't stop it. You just you see in their body language that they're just, you know, past here sometimes it gets shaken, and, you know, the, the and the I mean, it's just like it's the nature of the games. And that's the one thing about hard work is it creates determination and it creates that, that sense of, Hey man, I've worked my tail off to be this good, and one mistake's not gonna defeat me. It's not gonna break me. And you just see it with these kids is that they just respond really well to a lot of different circumstances. Well, as uh, a lot of famous people have said, luck starts to look a lot like hard work. Yep. So when you put the du when you when you put the time in and you practice perfect repetitions, this offense is looking like a well-oiled machine. And again. We are gifted. We're, we're lucky. We're blessed to have such a strong hitting core. You have six footers all along the front line with the exception of Claymar. But you're looking at a team that has multiple hitting weapons. Kelsey Cohen back to serve right now. And Cohen going to be on the serve for the Cavaliers up 18 to 15. And it is for Kelsey Cohen. Krofka not able to handle that high float serve. <coughs> Excuse me. She is, uh, she's been an Really hard to stop with that big left-handed hitter, but uh, passing-wise, that one's going down as an error. 19 to 15, and serve receive. Pass through that to uh, Torres. Prize and Cassidy Erie with the block in the middle for the Cavaliers. You shall not pass. <laughs> I'm speechless over here. My Cassidy is just capturing my attention in that big middle. And here's received by Tello Torres with a set. Kropka with a hit and the Dianic No Watts kicking herself a bit, but a good effort to try to get that ball to her right and a point for the Hayes Rebels. Hey, let, let, let me talk real quick about Go. the, the cleanliness Go. of Torres' hands for Hayes. 
uh, the Lady Rebels. She's off. She is literally off the charts in terms of the, the last two or three sets. She's jump set. And Maddie with the hammer on the slot. The cover. back is still contested. Joust back going. and forth. Watts saves Chelsea it. Cohen. Cohen hits it here. Here comes Chams with a tap over the dink. Here comes a set by Torres. Cross with a drop. Hit by Wheeler. Black pass. Oh. And uh, Cavaliers to miscommunication there. But, hey, great sequence back and forth. Continue. Absolutely. Torres just absolutely keeping this Lady Hayes, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Lady Rebels offense alive. She is well trained, Mike. That's all I gotta say. Her hands are pure, and her technique is fantastic. And uh, hit by Wheeler here on the third touch, left side. Hit in the left side, Croft with the rise and smack. And here comes Watts with the jump set. Here comes Jams. And I gotta have an violation call or a double. That's wow. a what? I am trying to tell you, Mike. This is literally maybe the tightest I've ever seen an indoor match called. That was literally. I don't know that that set would have been called in any gym in the United States. Hey, if it makes you better, I mean, I. But that's that's a little absurd. Anyway, received here by Wheeler. Cavaliers up 18 to 20. 20 and wow, Cassidy Erie tried to launch it with the right hand, tapped it with the left hand. She should have not have gotten a point there, but wow, wow. <laughs> she should not have gotten a point there, and she found a way to get it across. Great job by Cassidy Erie. Cassidy uh, Erie going levitation style. Uh, staying airborne long enough to get a uh, left-handed kill. Off the block hit. That was, I think we're gonna have to start calling Cassidy Erie the Matrix. Cause she's living right in the, in the I don't know, maybe that's not gonna stick either, but <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, that belonged to Sean Marion. Sean Marion used to have that, so I, I don't know if he could take that. That's very true, that's very true. Levitation, nine, Holmes. 21 to 19, Cavaliers lead by two. Keely Hamilton with Hamilton. a great cut, it's passed back it's up, to the little airborne. Up. Cohen passed behind, here comes the back row attack by Claymeyer. They took their eye off it for a second, but regathered, but hey, you still gotta stay locked in. Every touch. Play to the whistle, my friend. 21, 20, Cavaliers lead by one. So it'd be big to take set two. Heppel hits, hits champs, hits her right side. Tello with the dump off. No, Torres with the dump off, saved by Heppel. Wheeler hits it left side. And Torres with the, the air. Scramble Collins hits it over. Hamilton passes. Heppel hits the Erie. And through the Erie block. Delivers. Yes, and the Erie with a point for the Cavaliers. Through the block. Man, I am trying to tell you, Carson has come alive as a setter. She did, that entire rally was pretty dynamic. Could have gotten some people out of system. She stayed calm, cool, and collected and delivered a one and a half. To and Rio with the weapon off the serve and an ace for the Cavaliers. 23-20 was in a fantastic libero for this team last year and finding her this year off the serve. And a good Serving serve here specialist. the floor. Here comes the attack. Jousted, blocked oh by Claymire. Claymire! Hey, get to it. Claymire's ponytail getting up over the top of the net just now as she tap blocks that ball back to the 14-foot line. That was impressive ups by Kristen Claymire. 24-20, Cavaliers looking for the set point. Rio launches it. Sand middle of the floor, good pass by Tello Torres. Up in the air, hit backwards by Krofka. Set here by Rio, set by Hempel. Hit by Hamilton! And skies over Hamilton with a happy birthday. Hit by, recovered by to Cohen hit and by Claymire, and we'll have a violation called. That's going to get called. Hey, listen, I'll take one error every 10 sets, my friend. That was that was good volleyball. Keely Hamilton with the cross-court detonation. But, man, I'll tell you what, this Hayes team can dig the volleyball. They're good, man. They're a good team. Received by Cohen, set by Heppel the far side. Here comes Hamilton with the cut. It's still alive. It's a second gracious. touch. Here comes the third one, a save. Save! What a miraculous save by Hayes. Here comes Claymire. And gets Claymire the kill. Puts it down. Cavaliers take set two. Let's go! Yes, Mike. Absolutely electric performance by Claymire in that set. Hitting from off the net, hitting from left side, hitting from right side, tap blocking straight down. Wow, I'm I'm super impressed with this kid's indoor game. 25-21. Cavaliers take set number two. And I, you know, normally professionally I'm supposed to be very measured, not try to try to favor, but you know, we are we are LT. And you know, I, I've 
I've been through this here for three years to now four season watch this team, and I just love seeing them win. Absolutely, and Mike. That, that's all. But uh, let's talk about Beach and uh, Clay Meyer now committing to play at Houston Baptist Division One NCAA school. A dream come true for her, and she's worked for every bit of it. Uh, the impact of Beach, it really surprises me now that I think about it, how maybe this should have been something that uh, the game should have been looking more forward to earlier on. But now the impact to have at College Beach now and the training methods that you can use to develop your players, you know, talk, just how, how much does that help the indoor game for, for all of these players? Man, that's a great question, Mike. When you have the top coaches in the country, the top indoor coaches in the country, promoting and preferring and asking their kids to play beach volleyball and their off season during the summertime because it helps them be more dynamic, be more court aware, uh, get more touches, be uh, m more technical in a lot of ways. And it always, it, you know, just even movement in the sand, it helps them come back to the hardwood and move more fluidly. You're watching a team with si three of its six starters playing beach all summer long, all of them national, uh, national team members with Project Serve, going out to Hermosa Beach, California, training for a week, competing for a week in the deepest sand in the country, and, you, and you're seeing the fruits right here pay off. Kristen Claymeyer, literally her first sand tournament ever, Last summer was the exact same tournament. Right. It was the BBCA, the Beach Volleyball Championships of America, uh, National Championships. Uh, it was our, it was Project Service first time to go out there. Kristen Claymeyer uh, playing with another young lady, Ivy Weber, yep. uh, on uh, not the not the center court, but the the court right behind center court. It's court number two, and 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 they're in front of all the college coaches, the uh, the announcement table, the whole nine yards. And Kristen Claymeyer in her first tournament as a sand player gets noticed by Houston Baptist that same day and puts on a show. I mean, the kid was three weeks into her beach volleyball career and absolutely puts on a show. And uh, here, here we are a year later seeing the fruits of that uh, come to pass. So uh, w w for what, it, what it's doing on the training side, it's eliciting enormous physical benefits for the athletes. But what, you, what you're seeing on the opportunity side is you've got a five foot eight outside hitter who is – absolutely wonderful to watch at the 6A level indoors but who gets to go and play Division 1 level NCAA beach volleyball for a, a, a highly ranked program and, and really get to live out her dreams. This is an opportunity thing, Mike, and that's what I cannot wait for more players to see is that there are two full branches of college volleyball available to them. And the, in this gym was Leah Mulkey's 1,000th kill uh, during Leah's senior year. And Kristen uh, you know, apparently really, really looked up to Leah. And you can see the influence on her games and the kind of shots. I don't know Absolutely. if you ever got to see Leah Mulkey yeah. play. She was phenomenal. Absolutely. I, that, that was probably one of the, the, the hardest hitters I've ever, like, just she could really hammer the ball. But congratulations to Chris Claymeyer. Uh, harder workers to get. And a first point going to go to the Cavaliers here in set three. And it'll be Watts on the serve as we try to regather ourselves here for the third set. Watts down the line here, uh, passing the middle floor towards the jump right up in the air. Agnew hits it hard. Come on with a shot. Here comes Clay Meyer, hit on the left side. Tello with the pass here to Torres, hit by Agnew, one arm Kelsey save Cohen. by Cohen. Here comes Christian Claymeyer off the block. Second touch, Torres comes hit by Agnew, and a good good effort there by Jams. Try to lay out for that ball, but it's uh, now one Cohen to one with another one of maybe four digs that I've seen this match that are absolutely impressive. Not only for her size, but just the amount of court that she can cover with a full layout in one second. It's amazing. And a tied up at one. Torres on the serve. An incredible player for this Hayes Rebel team. And Rudish going to get the 3 nice. here on the third touch. Torres with a jump set. Crawford with a hit the right side block by Rudish. You can't get past Sasha. Once, twice. Sasha says Sasha no more. Back to back blocks. Sasha, what do you call her? Sasha, Sasha the, the Slayer. Slayer. Absolutely. Slayer. Because you know, if you ever go to a metal concert and they yell out Slayer, well, I think I need no, to Mike. get that sound bite. No, every Mike, time I haven't. But yeah, thank God you <laughs> haven't. That's probably why I'm deaf. No, no, it's not. But Tello with the serve received. Torres hits the left side. Active with a big swing. Watch wow. with a one-arm save. 
Maddie sends it across the floor, and that's probably that's probably a correct. Is it? I don't know. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you that's marginal, my friend. I mean, I've been watching indoor volleyball for 15 years, and and I just this is some of the tightest hands calls I've ever seen. Yeah, that's a well. I mean, scores. They got a better angle than I do, but I, I'm not here to criticize. Here comes a set by Watson to the outside. Here comes Cham. It's blocked back, and nobody there to cover. Coach Boren losing her shoe here on the left side. You know, that. that. Three to, you know, I don't know if she was upset. There was not enough coverage there, but that shoe came off. Here's that received by Cohen, set by Watts. Oh. That's probably a legit double there. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, and, that's a real one. And, I, and you listen, know, that's, what, what we need to do is we need to mitigate these deep float serves. They are pacey, <laughs> but we've got to take our legs out of the pass and keep our bottoms down so we can get an apex on the ball. Set here by, uh, set, uh, served by Sheely. Here comes Watts with a set. Here comes Jam! Sand down the line and just too far out. That was a missed opportunity. We had a, a nice middle set up there. I think Sasha came through and held the middles in for the block. Jam's getting isolation on the outside against one blocker and really should have closed the deal. But like you said, tried to turn a little bit too much line. Let's see what we have coming up next. Yeah, it's going to be Sheely out there as she'll send the serve for Hayes. Received by Wheeler, four side on the floor. Set here by McKenna Eklund to the ball game and a kill by Maddie Williams. There you go, Maddie. Great kid. Interesting. Uh, five to three. McKenna, the third setter that we've seen in this match. I'm not sure if she's going to set all the way around. Looks like she may. And here's a serve received by Tello for Hayes. Here comes now the that is there a double set, and now we have some equalization. That's fantastic. Yeah. Listen, I'm all for tight hands calls. I'm all for letting the refs uh, 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 regulate that, that piece of the game as long as they're calling it equal on both sides of the court. Yeah, do what you can. For serve by Cohen, and an ace for the Cavaliers. Five to five. Uh, I want to give an update on the, our Cavs in college, and I want to make this a segment that did not quite have enough time to prepare for. They come with a serve, set here by Tello, hit by Kropka, too strong. That was not... I don't think that was touched by anybody. Maybe maybe McKenna got an arm on it. But she may have gotten in touch, but I didn't I see think, the I think that's point over here, though. Nobody touched it and it went out. But, you know, hey, I'm broadcasting. I don't, you know... I, I can only see so much, so while well, I'm just rambling out loud. Here comes the surf by Tello set here by Gary. Finds the crease and smack. I am impressed with McKenna's hand setting right now. Delivering the nice timing on the middle set with Cassidy Erie. Big side out. And we needed that. We're six and six. Now listen, the last two the last two matches, we were down an average of three and a half points. And at this point in the set, the first two sets. Cole with a good save. Oh, Hempo lays it out and a uh, touch on over here by Hamilton. Hit but a big whip and hit swing here at the net, trying to save it as Erie. And a point for Hayes, but you know, good effort on both sides. Let me tell you, this Croft kid from Hayes is going to play somewhere at the next level. She has got She's awesome. a big vertical and a, and a high elbow and a heavy whip, man. And here we go. We've got Ashley Esparza on the serve for Hayes. Launches it. Received by Claymire or left back. Here comes Hamilton. Cuts it. Great touch shot. Covered up by Tello. Hit by Esparza to the lefty for the back row attack. Cole with a pass behind. Here comes Jams. Block back. Cohen trying to save it. And just out of the reach of Claymire for the second touch. But, you know, hey, that's on good these, coverage. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, on, on these bump sets from, uh, from Cohen uh, to the outside hitter, when Jams is on that left side, I'd really like to see her get back another two to three feet on her, on her reload for her approach so that she can, she can bring a little bit more aggression. Little more up under that one. Eight to six, Cavaliers down to pass around on the third touch. Claymire with a pass. Here comes a hit sideways by Erie. And a point for the Rebels now leading nine to six. And now, hey, no worries for the Cavs. You're within striking distance. Absolutely. Brandis Bourne's going to take a timeout here. And right now, and I bet you my last dollar that she's going to talk to this team about mitigating or eliminating 
our side errors. Is Unforced that is errors. that a real? Is that do, do you want to put a wager on that? We can ask Raph. Okay. Well, considering I mean, I, I don't know if that legal. I don't think we should do that here on the broadcast. This is a family broadcast. In my pocket, I, I guess. But then, <laughs> now continue, continue. <laughs> I was like, why want the odds on this? Uh, but so one thing that Brandis talks to me a lot about in, in terms of this team is is keeping our errors low so that we can keep the playing field level. Yep. If we let our offense do what it's supposed to do and don't shoot ourselves in the foot with those high counts of errors, we typically win. Yeah, I mean that, that I mean it's you know especially like for basketball too. Like the more times you have, you know, no turnovers, no uh no gimmies that you just give to the other team. Like your your probability of winning just goes so much higher, and, and that's uh, you know efficiency is going to be the key. Nine to six received by Claymeyer on the serve here for Lake Travis. Here comes Jams on the right side, high of the blocks, but covered deep back. Jams struggling a little bit tonight. A point here for Catherine Croft with a hammer on the left side. And yeah, hey, Jams had some great swings. I think she. You know, hey, she's a sophomore. The peaks are going to be really high. The lows are going to be all right. And right now, yeah, Jam's just trying to find a rhythm. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing a little bit of timid play here from the, from the Cavs. We'll see if they can bounce back. Out serve there from Esparza. And Rio up. coming in to serve for Jam's. Uh, Rio's been on fire this match. Uh, I'd, I'd venture to call her a serving specialist at this point. And a lob sense it middle of the floor set by Torres. They hit across the other side. Croft off the block, received by Cohen. Hempel with the bump pass. Smart decision Hamilton with the bump set. The left foot set here by Torres. Oh, and Torres with a good dump off. Got me faked. I was ready for set. And a good dump. And 11 to 7. The turn and burn. That one right. Set or dump, my friend. That is exactly what that was. And Torres using the cleanliness of her hands to execute that play to perfection. We are down four. Croft here on the serve, or sends it here to Cohen. Here comes Cassidy Erie, overhands it, jousting back and forth. I'll tell you what, Cassidy Erie is as good as I've seen this year in the indoor game at the 6A level at the second jump. The first yeah. jump, she's getting off the ground quick and efficient. The second jump, she is right back up in the air at max capacity, max vertical touch, and it's fantastic to watch. And Agnew here off of the serve by Erie. Hamilton with a big rip and too far. But a good swing by Hamilton on the right side and a point for the Rebels. 12 to 8. Hayes leading by four, but Cavaliers within striking distance here in the third set and an error into the net off of the serve. This midpoint in the mat, this, I'm sorry, this midpoint in the set is where we have seen Lake Travis start to tie it up. And uh, and for the and 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 see the Lady Rebels start to back down in the last two sets. We'll see if this one carries the same rhythm. And McKenna Eklund on the serve, lobs it over, received by Croft Torres with a set, and that's and a double, double there. Call. McKenna bringing some nice energy to the floor. I, I like what she's doing. I like that she's calm. Uh, she's delivering some powerful serves, and like I said a little while ago, some impressive hand setting. And here we go, McKenna Eklund. Six foot junior sends it down the line. Torres with the bump pass. Here comes a wink swing by Agnew, covered up by Rio. Set here to the outside. Here comes Claymeyer, blocked back. And a good block there. It's a little push pushback here by the Hayes Rebels. Trista Strasser on there. There's, there. there's a lot of talent on this side of the floor. They're Absolutely. not incapable of making a stretch at this. Absolutely. It's a very good team. Kristen Claymeyer reaching back to Buta to, cut, to, to, get, to, to load up for that swing. Wow. And here's the hit on over by Maddie Williams on the nice first touch. Nice shot by Agnew Maddie. Shuffles her feet, hits it on over. McKenna Eckler to the center. Comes hands. Maddie Williams to the drop. Good cover by Croft once, twice. And the third hit still alive. Who's got it? It's Rio. Set by Eckler. Swing by Rudich. Yes. Sasha with a clever, uh, uh, just a smart, intelligent tip right there. She realized she didn't have her feet to the ball and still delivered a kill with the tip just over the block. Right in front of the uh, the defender on the back, on the uh, on the Hayes side, and a uh, Sasha Rudich going to Providence College, going to be a Friar, and it got an ace for Kristen Claymeyer. Cavaliers rolling right here. Let me tell you something. Uh, Croft on the Hayes side, fantastic hitter. Definitely a, a serve receive error right there that they did not need if they were going to stave off this comeback by the Lake Travis Cavaliers. 
13 to 12, here comes Claymeyer on the jump serve. Good location with it, passed right up in the air. Kropka scrambles, this, this one's gonna, gonna be come a free here ball. to the scorer's table. It clears the antenna, stays over the net. By Ken Eklund, here comes Matty on the slide, tipped and dropped. Here comes the second touch by Torres, hit by Kropka, saved by Claymeyer. Hit by McKenna Eklund, another third touch by Kristen Claymeyer. 13 to 12, Torres with a set, hit by Kropka, and through the arms of Chams and Rudich here on the right side. It, boy, that's tough to do to try to get past both of them, and a good hit by Matty Kropka for Hayes. Well, I gotta give, I get it, honestly, uh, Kropka with a great cross court hit, actually two great cross court hits back to back. But I got to give all the credit to Torres with the sweet, sweet hand sets. She is taking hard balls, spinny balls, and delivering nectar to her outside hitters. Received by Cohen, set by McKenna Eklund here to the left side. Jams gets it, hits deep mid. Set by Torres, hits the outside of Croft. Croft off the block. Ooh, what wow. a save by McKenna Eklund with the left hand. Claymeyer lobs it on over. Set inside the attack line. Croft That's hits a the right call. side, and they're going to call it a double there. Love I have it. never seen so many doubles called in my life in I, one volleyball match but ever. I, I got to give these guys credit. They are absolutely, that was correct, even, they are absolutely calling it even, and they are calling it even on the both sides of the floor. Let's talk about McKenna. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's McKenna Eklund. McKenna Eklund on a one, I mean, literally almost single-handedly keeping that play alive last rally and just doing some impressive stuff all the way around the court. Her hands are unbelievable. Tello here on the jump serve, a center right at jams, set here from behind the attack line by Eklund. It comes a big swing, Maddie Williams with a kill for the Cavaliers. Some dynamic movement by Maddie Williams right there. She took a regular approach and then turned it into a mock slide approach because she saw that set sliding just a, just she, a little bit away from She's just a great her. left foot jumper, and I think she's more as, as comfortable as she, anybody yeah, at absolutely. just elevating off of that foot. I agree, and I agree. 15 to 14, here comes the set and hit by Kropka, the drop saved by Hamilton. Hempel with a set here to the left side, here comes Chams with the eraser. Hits on over here, and covered up by Torres. Hit, boom, elevation by Catherine Croft. Wow. Mike, you can hear the crowd going wow. absolutely nuts for that cross court Croft hit. That kid can get a hold of the ball, man. I bet you uh, Kristen Claymeyer had a little sting on that forearm from that Ooh. dig. That was a great hit. 16 to 14, Rebels ahead by two here in set three. Cavaliers, two sets to none. Received by Claymire right back. Here comes the set from behind. Shams gets it from the right side. Good dig up there by Shealy yes. and another double call. And we are looking at a game of errors, my friend. Boy, it, it is. Uh, Jam, you know what? Listen, I, you know, we talked about Jams a little while ago. She's what she is do she was playing cautious, she was playing tentatively, but what she is doing is keeping the ball alive Five, yes. and allowing the, the errors to be the working difference. Rio with the serve here hit by Croft, and she's determined to bring this Hayes team to another set. A good effort <laughs> by Catherine Croft and a hit on the right side for Catherine, the Red Lady Rebels. Catherine Croft is trying to put this team on her back and keep this thing alive, my friend. Uh, that is one of the best hits indoor I've seen, period, this year or any other. Wow. Received by Rio here on the serve. Hempel with a shot. Here comes Hamilton with a response. Yes. And too far. Uh, too far. It was over the line. And it's just about your response right now. Things aren't rolling. Hayes starting to get a little momentum. How do you respond? A lot of game left here, Mike. Let's see how they do it. Received by Cohen. Pass around. Hempel's going to pass one in. Here comes Hamilton with a drop That's off. A smart of and then Hamilton with a touch here on the right side of the net for the Cavaliers. 18 to 16. Coach Bourne going to work. She's trying to find the right cocktail here, the right mix of, of, of personnel on the court that's going to get this job done late in this third set. Erie now here at her feet, launches it. Deep court set up here by Torres behind, and that, that was definitely a double. Torres, I mean, she's been a, she, she started as a freshman. She was amazing as a freshman, now into her junior season. Great well, player, but struggling right now. Well, let me tell you something, Mike. She, she, you know, she's reaching the top end of her talent level, and what she's doing is she's forcing things that aren't necessarily there. She needs to stay in her comfort zone, stay in her wheelhouse, because they are siding out well when she gives those balls. Agnew hits it on over here. Oh! oh and McKenna Eklund with the elevation. McKenna Eklund whopping a left-handed across court, 10-foot line, off the bump set from Cassidy Erie. That is impressive ball control from your starting middle, my friend. That's pretty good. 18-18, the We Believe Cavaliers tied up. 
here in set three. A high serve. Croft puts it into play. Out of system. Could Tello be a free ball situation. Now. Croft hits it on the third shot. touch from back row. Hebel the side. Rudic with a tap over. And oh they're going to have a double call here on Lake Travis. Word. Cassidy Erie actually digging that, that, uh, that short ball. Is there ball. like a memo that came from the state telling all the officials to, I don't know. I, I, I yeah. it just, it's, it's, maybe they're absolutely probably correct, but man, this is the highest variance I've ever seen in a match before. Received by Rio, set here to the outside. Here comes McKenna Eklund off the block. Hit a Collins, over hit. Hit two-handed at the net, that's a net violation. No, on, it's on this side! He's asking the down ref to come see him because that what he he's gonna yeah, change that, that call. Hit right there. Nineteen to eighteen. Look There's no way that she's be a nervous. Point for she Hayes. knows. All respect to him, but Number they 14, hit the net first. We weren't we were not in vicinity just now. And we're I you know, and they may uh, stay with this. That's fine, but yep, that's the right call. That's the right call. They are going to jump ball. They're going to redo this point. The down ref saw Lake Travis. The up ref saw Hayes in the net. So we're going to get a push call. Actually pretty rare to see a push call. 19-18. to 18. Cavaliers down. One now here on the attack after the serve received. Clay Meyer with the left hand. Block back. It goes out of bounds. Point for the Cavaliers. <laughs> that is clean. Clay Meyer the eraser. That is clean living right there. Clay Meyer getting blocked straight down, but it was out of bounds. Point for the Lake Travis Lady Cavaliers. 19 to 19, Cavaliers trying to sweep here tonight against a very good Hayes team. Boy, this would perfect be quite serve. a perfect Eklund. serve. Eklund with the ace. Eklund absolutely performing top notch here in the third set. I am so impressed with this kid. I want to. I'm going to do some more research. I mean, on yeah, her. I mean, I'm she. Do some more research I mean, on she kind of, kind of went through a little low for a stretch. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I believe, uh, a club national championship uh, and a tournament in Detroit earlier this summer. But, you know, great reach. She's a good jumper. I think she's slowly starting to, to find a rhythm as a hitter. And, you know, versatility. Place the setter, place the hitter. Both the left hand, hit on the right side. Uh, terrific player who's emerging and getting more confident uh, once again. Absolutely. What I'm seeing on the court right now from her, from Eklund, is intelligent play. And that's hard to do with a young player. Did she say she was a junior this year? Yeah, she's, she is a junior. So, um, that's, you know, she's coming into her own. Then this, the level, the level of touch that I'm seeing from her right now is super impressive. And Eklund here on the serve, launches it, sends it middle of the floor, set by Torres, hit to the outside. Oh, block back, but that goes out of bounds. The Williams and Rudich wall on the right side, but uh, the block back goes out of play and a point for the Hayes. Rebels, we're tied up at 20. This one's going to go down to the wire, Mike, and it's definitely going to come down to who keeps their unforced errors minimized. And here we go. Serve received here by Cohen. Popped around by oh, Claymeyer. Manages to avoid the pull and the net. Hit on over again. Claymeyer on the attack. Yes. Gets it over the net and through. 21-20. <laughs> Some gymnastics from Kristen Claymeyer right there to avoid the setter and the pull and stay out of the net keeping the little tip alive just so she can recoil, reload, and come back with the screamer that breaks through the double block of Hayes Lady Rebels. All right. So 21-20 here at Lake Travis. Here comes Clay Meyer on the surf sent here serve. middle of the floor. Hit by Torres, hit across here. Big hit by Agnew, recovered by Clay Meyer. Hit by McKenna Eklund. Jam sits on the left side jam, and jam killer. gets the kill for the Cavaliers. Cross Woo. roll shot delivered. McKenna Eklund with a leading, perfectly timed bump set right there. I'm so impressed with this kid's ball control right now. I can't even tell you. And here we go. 22 20. Here comes the jump serve and an ace for Kristen Claymeyer. Here for the Cavaliers. Mike, we just talked about it a second ago. Look at the energy on this Cavaliers squad. We just talked about it a second ago. If this thing was going to come down to the wire, and it's going to be about who can minimize this, the, the, the errors on their own side of the court. And we've got a timeout. We do want to thank our sponsors, Capital Title and Keller Williams Realty. Thank you also to the Lake Travis Cavalier uh, Volleyball Booster Club who support us and what we do. Uh, man, you know, I thought this could go five. I said it's a good team. Uh, Hayes has been struggling a little bit lately, but you know their peak is really good when when all these got when all these uh, ladies 
are playing at their best. So, I mean, it's still not impossible for them to, to try to squeak out three to send it to four, and Cavaliers just stay dialed in. And we've got senior Kristen Claymeyer on the serve here, 23-20. High jump serve, spins it over, ooh, off the top of the tape and bounces back. And yeah, I think a good ice, just kind of like yep. ice in the kicker in football. Absolutely. Take a timeout. Absolutely. That was, that's a uh, point for coach right there. That's a point going to the coach for a good, a well-timed timeout. 23-21, another timeout called. Uh, well, she's going back to the well. It worked once. They're going to try to do it again, see if they can ice the Cavaliers into uh, uh, a timeout hypnosis, if you will. But, hey, we'll see. Uh, the score is 23-21. Lake Travis is up. Mike Youngblood, Bobby Jones with you here. Courtside of Bills Gym here between Lake Travis and Hayes. Another one of the epic showdowns for this. Hayes has taken the last three, including two matches last year that were got pretty good matches. But... Yeah, this team ha has played with some fire tonight, and that's, you know, that's not easy to do, but when you get to it, man, you want it more. I mean, when you start bringing energy and you get that elation from everything of breaking, well, it's, it's I, hard I'm trying to, to think of the terms. It's just it's, like you it's, just want to keep going yeah, back to absolutely. it because it feels so good. Absolutely, but it's hard to sustain when you only have one or two players doing it. When you have six, seven, eight, nine, ten players all committing that energy, like we talked about earlier, it's going to create an inertia, a rolling sensation there. 23-21 received by Claymire, set here by McKenna Eklund, hit by Jams, left side. Ooh, saved with one nice arm, Torres hits to the outside, and into the net. Hit into the Croft net. with a good approach, but. We are at game point, match point. Kelsey Cohen is back to serve. 24-21, and it's going to be Kelsey Cohen on the serve for the Cavaliers, launches it. In the middle of the floor, hit by two players. Passed across. Maddie Croft come with a laser. Hit up by McKenna Eklund. Cohen with a pass. Kristen Claymeyer hits it on over. Set by Torres. Hit by Croft the right side off. And that's game. Late Travis set wins. Match. Late Travis wins. Late Travis wins. 25-21. Our final here. Cavaliers get the sweep here at Hayes. Oh, I missed it. Great performance by the Cavaliers, Hayes with some pushback and their struggles continue falling two to three. But Lake wow. Travis, five and oh. Wow. Five I'm, and I'm oh. So, I'm, so, I'm just really impressed, Mike, and how this Lake Travis team was able to congeal. There were several moments. There was a moment, uh, there were at both the first and second match, I'm sorry, the first and second set at, uh, we were down 12-9, 12-6 at one point. I mean, to fight back, through those moments against a tough Hayes squad is impressive. But here in the third set, to be down all the way until 17, 16, 17, 15, whatever that change was, timeouts taken, yada, yada. They fight back to, to, to bury Hayes in the last five points. That's impressive. And what, it, what do you it, attribute that to? I, you know, it's just belief, man. I mean, it is this coaching staff. They, 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 they put in a lot of work to, to figure out what it is that works well. And, you know, it's about culture. I mean, did, you don't get something for nothing. You, you really have to invest a lot of time in creating the little things that, that make your team great. And you find when, you, when the absence of little things, there are no little things. There aren't little ways that you pump yourself up. There aren't little ways that you get yourself tiled in. And the team has bought into the little things. Absolutely. Yeah, you can be great at the big things, the hitting. But, you know, one thing that has made a marketable difference in my time here that I've seen, you know, this Cavalier team wasn't very good off the serve. And I, I don't say that, you know, not good. It was just, you know, they weren't generating a lot of offense. They were generally teams were pretty able to get into system. And you now each year that Coach Bourne has been here, they've gotten marketably better off the serve to take teams out of system. So you're talking about the serve received and the ball control. Uh, I'm talking off the serve for the Lake Travis Cavaliers. Oh, oh, off the so serve serving. when they send it to the other side. Like how much more often that uh, the other side is scrambling a bit more and they're you, out of got system. Got you, got you, got you. And, and, uh, and, to, and as you alluded to there, that has also gotten a lot better at uh, the well, serve-receive side. Yeah, like, I mean, when you, when you can control the ball, you're going to control the game. But, no, you, to your point – the aggressiveness of the serves, I'm impressed. 
because the, ma the majority of these athletes on the Lake Travis squad are serving float serves. Uh, they're just able to put a lot of motion on the ball. They're able to put a lot of action on the ball and serve it accurately uh, to the placement and position that Coach Bourne is calling behind that clipboard. So I believe the last was 25-21 in the third. Is that correct? Wins 25-16, 25-21, 25-21. And, well, I mean, this was the first test, and now comes the second, and it's Westlake. And, uh, Lake Travis had did beat them in a preseason tournament last year, but, yeah, they've not gotten over that chaps hump. And, you know, to their credit, they've been a phenomenal program with great players, a new coach this year. I don't know a whole lot about them, and I don't care. You know, you can, you can talk about everything that those kids do. It's about what we do here at Lake Travis. And we do the things that we're supposed to compete the way that we are. We bring fire like this. Uh, you know, the, the score will take care of itself. And Coach Staff's going to do the preparation, all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, the energy out there that you saw that first set, kids screaming, and they believe, like, that's what it takes to beat elite teams. Absolutely. You have to be unbending in your will to destroy. And we saw that tonight. We saw this team with a little bit of snarl with them, a little bit more intensity. And Good Lord, did they want it more. That was awesome. That was good to see, man. That was absolutely good to see. All right. Mike, this was some of the best volleyball I've ever seen from Lake Travis squad. Uh, you know, I graduated from Lake Travis High School in 1996. I watched a, uh, I watched a handful of uh, playoff teams. I watched, a you know, two back-to-back -back state championship teams yeah, uh, uh, a, a few years back. Um, this team is looking like a – Literally a, a next level team in the 6A uh, in our in our in our district 25 6A. I think these guys have the potential. I mean, like you said, yeah, yeah, every, it, it's, it's about the little things. I think this team has the potential uh, to to get out of district uh, and to get and to get deep into the playoffs if and, if we can capitalize on the weapons that we have. Yeah, you know, first goal is just to win district because I, I think that a that just means a lot a for seeding. But you know that that is such a huge flag to stick in the field there that. You know, if you hammer down a district title, you know, you go into playoff season, anything can happen. And they played a lot of really good teams, came up short against some of those. But, you know, the elements to develop the weaponry, to, to be able to, to become a warrior at those biggest moments, they're all there. And I, I alluded to this earlier. I said, hey, tonight was great, but it's only good if we do it again tomorrow. And I think the kids believe that. And you're going to have bumps in the road like you do with every – yeah, 15, 16, 18-year-old kid. That's just, but man, this team is awesome and fun to watch. Great progress made across. All, but all credit to the uh, all credit to the Hayes Lady Rebels. Um, definitely put up a good fight tonight. Lake Travis Cavaliers pumping on all yeah. the cylinders. Well, we want to take a break here. We'll, we'll uh, I'll, I'll give you a moment here off air. We'll uh, we'll take a break here. We'll see if we do talk to Coach Bourne. Yep. Uh, I, okay, so we will take a break. You're listening to Lake Travis Cavalry Volleyball, winning at three sets to none tonight against Hayes on the road. Yes, on the road, sir. man! Absolutely. Love winning on the road. All right, well, uh, we'll, we'll take, uh, take a break here. Bright Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B Y P E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. This broadcast. This is the KMAX Sports Network. And this is what we do. Looking left, throws into the end zone. Bad snap complete. again. He hits the turf. And, and Devon scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins has it. 8, 10, 5, touchdown. We are the largest. We are the best. Bringing your teams to you. We've been doing it for 15 years. Inside, he's got blockers in front of him. Eight, touchdown. 10, 5, touchdown. Yes, sir. It's what we do. And nobody does it better. We are KMAX Sports. All right, we're back here at the court side of Bales Gym, joined here by Brandis Bourne. Uh, Coach, that was pretty good. That was, that, was, that was what we call a quality win right there. You guys were excellent. Energy was outstanding. You know, I felt like we knew that Hayes was going to be, a, you know, one of those teams in our district that's very, very hard. Um, they're very well coached over there by Stephanie. Um, you know, they, they have that killer instinct on their side. Um, and we knew that we've got to bring our A game tonight. Um, so I was really proud of our girls. 
And, and you, you've had a long history with her dating back to San Antonio. You guys have had to have a million – what's it like with the familiarity of somebody that you're close to and you compete with a lot to, to, to keep – adding extra wrinkles so they're not catching on. Well, what's that experience like? You know, I think that um, it's always fun playing playing our best friends. Yep. You know, and volleyball is such a small world, so we always play each other over yeah, and over. Prob probably. But, you know, I think, um, you know, we, we talk trash off the game, <laughs> and we, we go in there and we just play our best. But, again, the game – Lies in the age of yeah. 15 to 18 year olds, so who knows what's going to yeah, happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it is. We're, we're here with Brandon. I'm just kidding. We don't trash talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. You got to gotta get a little nasty out. But uh, we are at the three right. set to none win. Uh, Bobby, you go, Jeff, go ahead. Oh, no. I'm, uh, you know, just having watched the entire, um, you know, all three sets, um, there, was an, there was an energy and inertia that we sort of attributed to that we believe sort of spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple of individual players in a second, but let's let's talk about that that spirit of fire and staving off this this hard this tough Rebels team. How, were you proud of your team for that? Was it was it from you, or do you think it's actually got its own life force now? You know, I think that um, we're a unit together. We know um, that everybody has a role on this team. Everybody has a purpose on this team. And it doesn't matter where you're at, if you're the starting six, if you're our, our role players on the bench. Um, and I think once all the girls know what their purpose is and what their role is, it seems to, you know, fire everybody up. Every practice, every game, we're going harder and harder right now. Um, we had some of the best practice scrappiness in our gym yesterday. It was so amazing. Um, you know, Ginger Baldwin killed it at practice yesterday. Yes. I was so proud of her. Then she goes on the outside, and she's a banger on the outside at practice. I mean... You know, it, it's so fun in our gym right now, and, you know, it's also fun in, in the game yeah, situation. It, it, it's, uh, you guys are playing at a high level right now, and, and maintaining that is, I think is always the toughest thing because, you know, you're going to get down a little bit, but you, you, you've had a really unique ability to, to get back to the top level when you get down. And, and do, do you attribute that to anything, or is that just a collective You know, we part talk of a culture? lot about we are better in serve receive. We don't score that many points statistically when we serve, so that was something that we right. keyed in on in the last – um, two practices. We were a great serving team tonight. I mean, we were serving aggressive. We were missing some, but you know, that's going to happen when you start putting some pressure on Serve the other team. Exactly. And um, I was really, really happy with them on the serving. Uh, I'm just going to give a shout out to McKenna Eklund. Wow, she came she in there great. and yeah. was incredible. You know, she's a, a kid that um, you know, is, is going to do some phenomenal things and I'm excited to, to get back in the gym tomorrow or not tomorrow on Monday. Yeah. Well, you know, just to that point, I literally I had her name checked off. Uh, we had, you know, three, four, five girls tonight that were just super noteworthy. I mean, Carson looks so much more comfortable putting mm -hmm. her hands on the ball. Um, Cassidy, always. Claymeyer, electric tonight. But yeah. McKenna Eklund coming in like a seasoned vet and just handling business, digging balls. She was so great defensively. Then we throw her in front row, and she's just knocking balls. Um, she has gained so much confidence in our last three to four matches, you know, with the Andersons and the, yeah. you know, in the Dell Valley. And I'm so glad that her confidence is such a high level right now, and that that's going to get her a lot more playing time in there. Absolutely, and she's got some of the sweetest hands I've seen. You yes. have, you actually have a, a deep setting core now, which is, yeah. I mean, uh, we're, we're deep in every like position. Absolutely. Um, do you have it? Do you want to real quick? I, I thought, you know, and I may be biased, but, you know, Kristen Claymeyer just committed to Houston Baptist this, this past week. Uh, we're super proud of her on the beach side of things. Indoor, are you seeing a confidence in her? Are you seeing an, an electric, a fire in her? I saw something tonight that I just hadn't seen. You know, Kristen and I will eat lunch together, and she's like, we're going to win this. You know, she has so much fire, not even just on the court, but her words. She's a true captain of our team. You know, she's in the in the middle of that huddle, leading, directing, giving me the ball at game point. You know, those are the kids we need out there to to run the court at those crucial moments, and it's so awesome. I am so glad she's yeah. on our team and not the other team. <laughs> she, I'm gonna cry when Kristen graduates. Yeah, that's kind of. I said, there. does Kristen have a sister? There, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of great players here. There's never gonna be another Kristen Claymeyer. I, I don't care how good they are. There, there's never gonna be a kid with that kind of character. You know, Kristen um, called me this weekend, told me that she committed and. I just had tears in my eyes, and I she's, took a picture of me crying and sent it to her. You know? I said, I'm so proud of you. But, you know, I thought Cassidy Erie had a phenomenal night she blocking. Was, um, yes. Just came out, number one blocker in the 
in the city. Um, uh, Sasha, number two blocker in yeah. the city right now. Um, you wow. know, it's something that we are really harping on at practice that defense starts with that block. Um, and I'm just, I'm so happy on what we're doing and where we're peaking at this point of the season. Amen. I'm ready for Westlake on Tuesday. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Bring y'all's A game. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to just, I mean, I want to give a little props to Kelsey Cohen because oh, you've, man, had, you've had some really good awesome. liberos. That to Jennifer Dorna, that one kid that was there, you had Rio, that was, that was great. And I think that she might be the best one you've had the last four years. Like, she's playing at a great level right now. She is. You know, Kelsey has, you know, just overcome some extreme adversity with tearing her ACL last year. And she came in, um, actually, all through offseason, determined to get in that libero jersey this year. Mm -hmm. You know, and probably at the quickest recovery I've ever seen in an athlete, just because of her mindset. Um, and, you know, I'm just so proud of her. She's playing such great defensive volleyball right now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Taylor Rio next to her, I mean, that's like a fierce. Yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's a heck of a combo you got back there. combination that I'm must, just so excited. My sleep a little easier side. at night, I would think. Good Lord. Uh, and so, okay, Westlake. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it goes Lake without Bowie. saying. I mean, that's the biggest game for you. Uh, new coach, some new, some newer-ish players. Uh, we did get a chance to scout them, um, you know, and we know that that game um, has a lot of emotion behind it. So it's not just volleyball. Yeah, it's yeah. it's, it's it has everything. that rivalry, you know, and our girls get super pumped up and they get super pumped up. So it's it's going to be a really really fun match, um, and hopefully we can air manage and serve them off the court and keep them out of system. And then you want to add Boggs. I think that's a good place to enter right there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just one more, you know, just one more time. I just want to reiterate how um, it's always nice when somebody makes a promise and they deliver on the promise. Uh, not not speaking on wins, not speaking on potentiality, just speaking on what you talk to me about in the gym in terms of building a we believe attitude mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a strong core group. Uh, I just want to give you props for coming through on that promise and then actually getting the kids to buy in. The buy-in is real, and I think it's going to serve you guys well going into the second half of district. Hey, we believe. We believe. Go get them. We em. believe. Whatever it takes. That's right. going to be our final night. Coach Miranda's born. Thank you so much. Electric. Thank you to our sponsors. Uh, Capital Thank title, you. Kel Williams Realty. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Hey, good luck. We'll see you Tuesday. Keep rolling. That was, that was a good win, Bobby. Absolutely That's the one you can walk out of the gym really happy with. But that's going to wrap it up here from uh, Bales Gym. If Lake Travis wins three sets to none, a really impressive one against a very good Hayes team that's scrambling. But, hey, they're well coached. They're going to find a way they, uh, to recover their season. Absolutely. And this team has a ton of weapons. But I, I, I did see, you know, just admittedly, I did see a little bit of the deer in the headlights when, uh, you know, when you're getting stuff blocked, when you're getting, when you're getting kids, uh, you know, uh, siding out well from both sides of the pin, running, you know, we didn't see as many of the quick middle sets as we did in that. In yeah, we, 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 they, and they must have, you know, that, that, that comes in the, you know, the, the game of chess that you do play is that, Strategic, you know, if right. you know they're going to expect they're going to come out, and this team had enough, you know, I think length that they could try to contest with that. Right. I mean, Sasha had some good quick sets there, but she never really got a, like a real hammer on it like she's had in a couple right. of games. Right. I mean, we had I think we had about three really strong middle hits, a couple of uh Eerie overpasses. probably had all the big biggest ones. Right, right. But what you did see is uh here on the outside with Croft and Krafka just absolutely carrying the weight of the side out burden on this Hayes team and I got to give them credit for literally going down swinging. I mean, they those hey, kids they were putting balls away that were impressive division 1 level hits. Uh, all night long. I, I just, you know, I didn't know what to expect when I moved down here. I heard athletes were good, and then I was, like, coming to the gym here, and it's see Caroline Scrapper reach up into the ceiling and kill the ball, and it's it's just been mind-blowing, the level of athletes that you get right. at this level. And uh, we, Bobby, I think we got to close it out here tonight. We're the last people standing in this gym. They're going to get very mad if we stay here much longer. <laughs> but hey, I Mike. appreciate you joining. There's some great insight there that – you know, it's going in my bag and my notes just to like, hey, remember this term and well, be man, looking forward to listening to the archive a, Yeah, it's a pleasure to, uh, to sit on the bench with you and uh, and call these the wonderful Lady Lake Travis hey, Cavaliers. I want to give you a shot. Uh, you know, here's a, a 
chance to promote Project Serve, what you're doing. You might see me out there because I want to play. I'm, I'm going to be awful. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, it's going to be rusty. But, oh. you know, if you could teach me anything out there, uh, you know, I, hey, i got to find a partner. I appreciate it, man. Project Serve, we're all about building the beach community, man. And um, from the adults down to the kids, uh, you know, our home base is up there at the Domain in North Austin, Texas. Yep. Uh, and we serve a wonderful community up there. Uh, uh, this past April, we were able to open up uh, a two-core facility, or I'm sorry, partner up with a two-core facility that just opened up called the Rail House here in Kyle. Actually, yeah. If you're not, if you're listening here in Butte and Kyle, step on down to the uh, Rail House. We got some good beach courts out. I've gorgeous. been there many a times. Absolutely. I'll just save it at that. <laughs> two gorgeous beach volleyball courts there. Uh, owner John Nelson, good, great friend of mine, family friend and uh, just put a wonderful facility together. And we, we've just been blessed, man. We, we've been blessed to, to partner with, uh, you know, the Lake Travis Booster Club. Uh, we donated tons of time, tons of money, and a and, and lo lot of love uh, to get two courts built uh, out at the Lake Travis High School. And we're just literally, I'm just so thankful uh, that that community has embraced beach volleyball uh, it, into its core and, and enough to build two courts and support two courts being built literally right on campus, right behind I mean, one that, of that, that's fields. amazing. That, I mean, that, that, that is uh, an amenity second to none when it comes to the future of this program. You start thinking about, you know, you're going to get your young kids out there training for this. And, yeah, you know, that could be a secret weapon for this program for a long time is uh, – being able to treat, train out there, and, and I imagine you know when, when the basketball, when you you go two on two, three on three, that generally has helped skill skill level. But you know you go two two on two out there in volleyball court, man. I you can see it in Claymeyer how well her instincts are. Absolutely. Just uh, just from uh, I'll continue. I'm 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 running out of gas here as we round third. Hey, no headball. worries, man. That that caffeine crash is a real thing. Hey, listen, Mike. Thank you so much for having me out again tonight. But uh. Yeah, absolutely. We're so honored and, so, and just and, and so lucky to, to have two courts uh, go up at the Lake Travis campus. Uh, you know, we, you know, if anybody listening is interested uh, in, in just finding out more information, just uh, we're there to serve the community. We're there to to make sure that kids, families, friends get to uh, just have a home to play beach volleyball there in the Lake Travis community. Uh, you can look us up online at projectservevb.com uh, or on Facebook at Project Serve Beach. Uh, where we update three times a day. We've just got uh, tons of wonderful families. Uh, I have an amazing staff, the best staff I've ever worked with uh, here to serve you. And, uh, yeah, we're just stoked. We're fired up for, for what uh, for the community has in store for us and what God has in store for us and, and, and how we can uh, bless these kids moving forward, man. It's, it's going to be a, a wonderful ride. I can't Amen. wait. Amen. Bobby, that was awesome. We're still going here. Everybody's – yeah, we, we may be the last it. people in the school. I, I know out. you're a busy guy. <laughs> thank you for taking time Mike out. Drop. <laughs> Th th <laughs> thank you for taking time. Uh, man, that was fun. Always man, a pleasure, brother. Well, so we're going to – oh, my Lord. And I, I'm very sorry. I want to say thank you to Les Cleary, our QA and producer. I've not given a shout-out to Les. I so wrapped up in this game, but uh, thank you to Les for watching over us. And uh, Chuck Licata, Mo Bertrand, Christina Weber, Suda Ventcat. And all the KMAC crew and Vipe Media, we thank you so much for this opportunity. And to Lake Travis as well. Uh, Cavaliers driving back, a winner, winning 3-0 in a fantastic match. And, hey, it's Westlake up next Tuesday. And, uh, enough said. I mean, go get them, Cavs. That's going to wrap things up around a third and heading for home. I'm Mike Emma for Bobby Jones and Les Clary saying so long, everybody. We'll see you at the next one. Good night.